Today we're going to be talking about what the heck is rasterize. But before we dive into any of that, I got a little question for you. Is every digital image that you see made up of pixels? You've got five seconds to make up your mind. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, time's up. Whatever answer you have in your mind by the end of the video, you'll know whether you're a winner or a winner. Because even if you're wrong, you have to be wrong to be right sometimes in order to learn. Okay, so let's do a little experiment. In this experiment, I have three objects. Now these three objects represent three different kinds of graphics that we see in Photoshop. That is raster, vector and smart object. Now I have made separate layers for them. This one is raster. This one is literally vector and this one is literally smart object and have a look at the symbols at the corner of the logo. The so smart object has this kind of symbol, vector has this kind of square with anchor points around the corners and raster does not have any symbol. Now let's begin the experiment. Now what's the experiment? Okay, let's go ahead and select the raster object and let's make it bigger. Control or command T and let's try making it bigger, really, really huge just like that and if you press enter have a look if I zoom in you see what the pixels right this is pixelating right so let's go ahead let's go back and now let's do the same with vector okay let's select the vector and let's make it bigger controller command T make it huge but when you show the edges the edges are really really smooth it doesn't pixelate no it doesn't so let's go ahead and get back and let's do smart object by the way if you're wondering why is it red violet and silver it's for you to understand r for raster r for red v for violet v for vector s for silver s for smart object so just keep that in mind just a little thing to keep you focused now let's do that with the smart object now if i do that with the smart object if i try to make it bigger hit enter and if i show the edges like that it's kind of not that sharp as it's also showing pixels, but it's kind of better. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Now, let's do another experiment. This time, let's choose the raster, let's make it smaller. And if I go ahead and make it like really, really small, just like that, okay, I made it really small. Now let's make it big again, Control command T. And if I make it big again, have a look, <laughs> what the heck have we made of it? It's totally pixelated, totally gone. Okay, let's get back. Let's do the same with vector. Okay, control command T and let's make it smaller and let's make it bigger. No effect. This guy is really flexible. Okay, now let's do that with the smart object. If I make it smaller, then again, I make it bigger, like really, really big. It's showing pixels. If I go ahead and if I try making it really, really huge and it's still showing pixels, but it didn't lose pixels like the raster image. So what do we conclude from this? If you look at raster graphic, we made it smaller, we made it bigger, it got pixelated. Which says that raster graphics is made up of pixels. Okay, done. If you make it bigger, you can see the pixels. If you make it smaller, now here's what's interesting. If you make it smaller, just like this, hit enter what happens is the number of pixels also go down and they fit into the pixels of the canvas now what do i mean by the pixels of the canvas here's what i mean okay if i go ahead and make a say gray object i'll, I'll just show you what happens if i zoom in pretty tight you see the pixels these are the pixels of the canvas now if you make it smaller it fits itself into the pixels of the canvas Okay, so the number of pixels decreases. Therefore, when you make it big again, it just kind of looks eh, doesn't look right. Okay, so I have made it smaller right now. If I go ahead and choose the raster, I've made it smaller. I have made it more smaller. See how it's fitting to the pixels of the canvas. Now, if I hit enter, it's looking like this. If I go ahead and make it bigger, it will still look the same. Okay, just like that. It will still look the same. Have a look. So all in all, raster images are made up of pixels. Now let's go back, let's understand vector. Now vector images, vector graphics, are formed 
by mathematical formulas. And since they are formed by mathematical formulas, no matter how much you zoom in, how much you pinch in, it never gets pixelated. Now what kind of mathematical formulas do you ask? Let me show you a very easy example, though these things are really, really complex and we don't want to get into maths. But let us understand this for a second, okay? So if I just go ahead and turn everything off and let's draw a straight line, a vector straight line and a 45 degrees, just like that. Now what would be the formula for this one? Very simple. Let's go ahead, create a new layer. Let me just show you this line, let's add some stroke of say black so that we can see it. Black, there we go, okay. Now, what's the formula for this? The formula for this is really simple, is x, let's make it a little bigger and change the color, x equals y. And that's the formula for this line. Now what is y? y is this coordinate, what is x? x is this coordinate. The horizontal coordinate is the x, the vertical coordinate is the y. Which means if x is 1, y is also 1. So if we make markers here just like that, just like this, okay. If the value of x is 1, then y is also 1 and they both meet here. If the value of x is 2, y is also true, they both meet here and if you join this, it will be this line. And these are the kind of mathematical formulas which make up vector objects. But what about smart objects? It's a little confusing, isn't it? If you make it smaller, if I go ahead to the smart object, if I make it smaller and if I make it bigger again, it doesn't lose pixels. But if I make it very big, it shows up pixels. So it's kind of confusing, but here's what it is. A smart object stores pixel information. Think of it like this. Suppose you have an object of say 100 pixels. Okay, just a rectangle of 100 pixels. You made it smaller. Okay, you made it as small as say 10 pixels. Now, if it's a smart object, it will store the 90 pixels in its pocket. It will just use the 10 pixels. Once you make it bigger, it will use all of its 100 pixels, take it out of the pocket, all of its 100 pixels if you make it that big. Now, a raster image, once you make it smaller, say there was a 100 pixel rectangle, once you make it smaller to say 10 pixels, the rest 90 pixels will be deleted if that's a raster graphic. But if it's a vector graphic, it will store it and will use the pixels accordingly. If you make it like say 40 pixels, it will use the 40 and store 60. Just like that, it will still have all of it. So if it's say like a 20 megapixel image, it's a smart object and you're adjusting it to your canvas of say, which is a 1080p canvas, you adjusted it to 1080p canvas, it still has all the details of a 20 megapixel image. So that's how it works. It does not have a definite amount of pixels. So the smart object determines the amount of pixels according to the size in which you keep it in. So you make it small, it decreases the number of pixels. You make it big, you, it increases the number of pixels. It will only be in its ideal pixel number when it's just been imported or just converted into a smart object or it is at just that size, just in its original size. So let's move on to another experiment. Suppose these circular objects, I want to rub out a certain area just like that and I want to make it look like Pac-Man. Have you played Pac-Man game? No? It's very interesting. Okay, so let's take the eraser and try erasing certain area just like that. Carving out just like an eye here and maybe make something like this. Okay, and by the way, if you want to make a straight line with any kind of brush, eraser or something, just click once, press and hold the shift key and click at the other point, at the other end point and it makes a straight line from A to B just like that. So let's go ahead and erase it just like this. Yep, it looks like Pac-Man. Now let's try it with the other ones, okay? Let's try it with the vector one. It just doesn't happen. It shows you the error. This shape layer must be rasterized. Now, I'll come to that. 
that's what the video is all about let's go ahead and cancel that let's try it with the smart object it just doesn't happen this smart object must be rasterized i'll get into that cancel now here's the conclusion of this one while you use the eraser tool now let's come back to rasterize the eraser tool the size of the eraser tool is measured by what pixels right if you make the eraser tool bigger it shows you diameter have a look diameter 318 486 px what is px pixels if you make the brush bigger smaller hardness something like that or whatever the hardness is there is this pixel factor here now if you want to delete a well-defined amount of pixel from this from a raster photo it's easy because a raster image has a well-defined number of pixel if it's hundred it's hundred there's no hiding but here's the thing vector images are not made up of pixels so if you say okay delete hundred pixels from this Photoshop gets confused. Man, I'm not made of pixels. How I, I don't have pixels. How can you delete 100 pixels from me? So that's out of the equation. Now let's come to smart object. Now smart object says that even though he has pixels, it doesn't have a well-defined number of pixels. If you make it bigger, it will use more. If you make it smaller, it will use less. It kind of has something which is hidden. So if you erase a definite amount of pixel from it, if you try to do that, Photoshop gets confused again and asks you to convert this into a raster graphic and the process of conversion listen to this very carefully and the process of conversion of a smart object or a vector graphic to raster is called rasterize so whenever you're doing something like painting on it, for example, you want to brush hair on it. So if you go to raster, if you take a brush, if you paint hair here, just like that, you can easily do that because the pixels are well defined. But if you want to do that in vector, you have to convert this to a raster and the process is called rasterize. It shows you the warning, rasterize the shape, okay. So this is one way to rasterize, okay? It shows you the warning and then you can click OK. It rasterizes and you can easily do whatever you want. But once you rasterize it, it loses all the qualities of vector. Now if you make it big and make it small and make it do all of that, it will kind of lose pixels, right? So keep in mind that when you rasterize, you lose all the other qualities. So that's kind of a trade-off here. Now. Same with smart object, try to do anything, it will show you the error, click OK, it will convert it into a raster graphic. Now, the other way of converting this into a raster graphic is right clicking on it and going to rasterize layer, which we time and again do in Photoshop. Okay, so click on it, it will do the same thing. Oops, I clicked somewhere else, rasterize layer, and the symbol will go away. Have a look at the symbol, symbol goes away, and now you can do anything you want. Now that pretty much answers why do you need to rasterize. Now the question arises, when do we need to rasterize? You see, whenever you are doing something, applying something, which is defined by a fixed number of pixels, then you need to rasterize. Now some of you might ask, well, I can apply, say, Gaussian blur to a smart object. Um, well, yes, you can apply Gaussian blur to a smart object, but here's an interesting thing. I applied Gaussian blur of, say, seven and the edges are pretty blurred right say 10 edges are blurred click ok right now this is a smart object if i make it bigger okay if i make it bigger hit enter see the edges the edges are less blurred now gaussian blur stays the same the effect of the gaussian blur does not increase the pixel size does not increase of the filter but if this was not a smart object, so if, if I rasterize it and then I apply blur, Gaussian blur, same, 10 pixels, it's giving the same effect. But this time if I make it bigger, have a look, the blur also increases with the size. The effect kind of burns into the photo. You see, that's the difference. So more confusion. When do you need to rasterize? Simple answer. Whenever you see the warning message, then you need to rasterize. Hope that answers your question. Also, you can rasterize text, which is also very interesting. So suppose you wrote something, say the letter T, and 
you want to make it kind of jaggy kind of shapey and you want to make a logo out of it you cannot do that right now so suppose you want to just go ahead and delete an edge just like this if we try to do it if we press delete it won't do it you need to rasterize the type so right click on it and select rasterize type now you can do whatever you want you can morph it you can do whatever you want with it go ahead delete it erase certain parts filters whatever so that's pretty much all it about rasterize just remember one thing the process of conversion of text vectors smart object anything to raster graphics is called rasterize i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't just subscribe click the bell button so that you my friend don't miss anything. I'll see you guys on the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.